What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with a quick video, user requested or viewer requested video on spending, specifically about evaluating spending. Um, more or less, this sparked when people asked me if I thought $50 for Emma Frost was reasonable. And I bought her twice, so clearly I thought it was so reasonable I could, in fact, spend twice as much for her. But outside of what your specific wallet and financial situation is, there's a, a true fact that must exist in all forms of mobile game spending, video game spending, or pretty much any spending at all that maybe you aren't aware of, and hopefully this video will clarify it. Uh, basically, every single game is, is a, a matter of time and resources. Every game, in the pretty much every game especially games that come out now. So when you spend money, you're not buying a character, right? You're buying whatever the time it would normally take you to obtain that character, plus whatever effort or resources you would have to expend in order to obtain that character. So, for example, where we're talking about Emma Frost, you can see that $50 for Emma Frost, whether or not she's a great character, is a very steep price. It's roughly the price of a AAA title on your PC and almost the same as a brand new PS4 game. Uh, most Switch games actually too. Or 15 Switch games, depending on what you're doing. The, the reason I thought it was reasonable to spend $50 on Emma Frost is very simple. Uh, when she was released, we were told it would be about two and a half weeks before her milestone, the way she would be released to the general public of the game, would start. She is a 100 shard unlock, and it would cost me not so much energy and not as much as when it comes as far as to the World Warrior part, but it would cost me about 1.2 million gold a day just to just to get enough shards within a month or so to unlock her. Now I know you get about 190 shards, 192 shards, if you can hit all of the milestones that you need over the course of a recurring milestone event. But one, we don't know that they're gonna keep that number for the Emma milestone. We, we don't know if it's that reasonable, and if you miss out on a couple of shards here or there, it might be okay but it's still gonna take you time. Even if you're hitting all the milestones, it's still gonna take you at least two weeks to unlock her. So for me, $50 was worth the roughly month and a half of time that it would have taken me to get Emma as well as needing to spend those resources just without having her. Um, the second offer was very similar thought. How long? Reasonably, do you think it would take you to get the number of shards of Emma you would get for $100? For me, that number happened to be just under enough for 5 stars, so it was like 280 total character shards. How long do you think it'll take you to get 200 character shards? Again, this is starting from the day she uh, her offer went live until whenever. Let's be clear, it's incredibly unlikely that most players would even get close to that number of character shards in the first pass, probably it would take a lot of effort in the second pass. So then, assuming the milestones are a month on, a month off, which is total assumption, are you really questioning whether $100 was worth two and a half to three months of progress on a character? Well, that depends on the character. Emma is a high impact character, she is incredibly useful, and therefore I thought it was totally worth it for me to spend $100 to get a stronger version of her now, as opposed to waiting for later. That's up to you to decide. Conversely, I always like to talk about Beast, because I bought exactly zero of his offers, because I didn't think Beast was the kind of character that was going to be necessary for any of the content that I'm doing in the game, or for pretty much anybody. I don't think Beast, I think he's a good character with no real use. So I spent zero dollars on beast offers, and I currently have a three-star beast from the Blitz, and you know the situation. More or less, 
when it comes to spending, it always has to be a trade-off. So I, I'm going to look, I'm on my free-to-play account right now, just so you guys can see. So I, I've spent no money. You're going to see offers here that you probably haven't seen if you spent a dollar in this game for a while. But even if the offers are inherently good or bad, there's a lot of value to them. So like this is a perfect example. Uh, $49.99, right, for 180 times 5 character shards. Now, Wolverine character shards are literally worthless. You do not need them. Conversely, Cyclops character shards are impossible to get otherwise. These actually cancel out <laughs> in the way math works. Uh, this is a negative. This is a positive. So now we can only look at the three characters that do matter. And again, these are like this is good. This is useless. So whatever. These characters are characters that are farmable. How long do you think as a player it'll take you to get 180 character shards of all three of those characters? If the answer to that question is a ton of time, then maybe $50 just to get those three, ignoring the other two just for the sake of the argument, is absolutely worth it. Whether or not you need those characters, whether they're worth getting early in the game, those are tiny, minute little questions. But the truth is, for $50, you're getting more shards than, I'm not even exaggerating, months of farming characters will get you. And also keep in mind, you're not just saving on the months of characters shards you're farming those characters, you're also using that energy either to farm them continuously or to farm other things. So you're spreading out the value you're getting. So this offer is absolutely worth $50 considering what time and resources you get just for spending it, ignoring the fact that characters are, are useful or not. And you see it everywhere else, $24.99, all of these offers. 500 character shards for $25 with, oh, gold is whatever, they added it into it. Useful. You live in the game that, you know, it needs to progress. You need to have stronger characters. You need to have a lot of characters. You need to be able to use certain teams for certain things. So as you see the Sinister Six offer, or uh, I don't even see the rest of them. I don't know why. But as you see the other, oh, they randomized, that's why. As you see these offers show up randomly, they are increasing value because you're just getting more and more and more out of them. Moving into the next one, this is 45 character shards and 200 energy. Uh, one of the things is, Hawkeye, you know, until his rework hits in, I don't know, five days or something, Hawkeye, he doesn't really matter. So, 499 for Hawkeye shards. Yeah, you're getting a lot of value in him, but he's not someone you would normally be farming. So this offer, even though you're saving time on it, it's for something that ultimately isn't worth it. It's like buying three copies of Time Cop because it's cheaper than buying one. But you you don't need three. Like, why? It doesn't make sense. Don't, don't waste your money. Like, it's not worth it. Um, then you see the Superior Unique offers. These are really hard to come by. That's not necessarily through any fault of yours but through the game's design so this offer does represent a concept called forced artificial scarcity they control how often you can access these therefore whenever they set any price for these offers it's either going to look like an amazing deal because it takes so long to get them or something along those lines now i know i need a lot of bio gear i know most of us do so yeah this offer looks great because look at all this bio gear i get problem is um it's not my fault I don't have this gear, because I'm doing all the things I can in the game to get this gear. I'm opening the correct orbs, I'm farming the correct nodes, I'm doing the hardest versions of fights so I can get the most, I'm getting war stuff going on. They're just not showing up. So because I'm doing everything within the realms of the game to get this gear, I think this offer is still good value because it takes time, but I think it's a little dishonest about how, because you normally just wouldn't get access to these. You can't farm every day and get molecular scales. You just can't do it. And this is my free-to-play account, and I already have 20 somehow. Cool. Squirrel Girl offer. It's a dollar for an orb of six shards. She's not farmable. She might be soon. It's fine. Six shards is the minimum you can get. The max you can get is 180. Gamble. Have fun. You know, same thing with these offers. Hey, look, Corvus Glaive. Corvus Glaive is another character. He's currently unfarmable, right? So how much time is 29.99 saving you? Well, that depends. Do you need a stronger Corvus Glaive right now? Do you need 100 or 50 shards of him to do something? You don't know how long that's going to take. It's going to take X days 
from the time that actually becomes available. And 50 shards would probably take you on average maybe 15 to 20 days of farming, assuming it's a node, or maybe you know 10 to 12 days, depending on if it's in the right store or not, and whether you have the credits. So this could be totally a meaningful offer. But ultimately, if you can't currently farm the character, this offer can't be evaluated at anything, right? You can't really see how much time you're saving. The only thing you know is that you're saving time compared to somebody who isn't spending. So it's a little bit harder with characters that aren't farmable. It really depends on what you want and what you need. And again, in the same conversation as Emma, if, if having a really strong Black Order team is incredibly important to you before the average player gets it, this offer goes up in value dramatically because you're going ahead of other players as opposed to just in increasing your roster. Uh, Colossus is farmable, but again, it's in the same conversation. Uh, we really don't have to belabor the point. He's a good enough character for $29.99. Is, is 50 shards of Colossus worth the amount of time it takes to get him if you're farming his node? Not so much, but you know, maybe if this was $100 for 30, yeah, because that's a lot of jump, but that's my own opinion. Uh, Storm, same conversation, no notes. Merc Mayhem offers five Merc Orbs up to 145 shards. That's not true. It's got like eight in each, an average. So, you know, 30 shards, 40 shards total, maybe, uh, for $14.99 uh, of different Mercs. Yeah, I guess this is fine, but you're really not... You, when you have no control over it, when it's all RNG, the idea of how much time you spend... Is only found out afterwards so it's really hard to justify making purchases that you have no idea uh, what the growth is and that's the most important part knowing how much time and how many resources your purchase will spend now if this offer was $4.99 then it doesn't necessarily matter how what those 40 um, random character mercenary shards were because no matter what you were definitely gonna spend less than four dollars and 99 cents worth of effort to get any of those character shards or you know days or, or maybe even weeks to get the different numbers of them so it might line up but 14.99 a little too much you're not getting as much value taskmaster same as corvus he's currently in farmable great character you'll see when it matters uh, crystal farmable easy farmable Arena, you should be able to buy at least one character shard a day, which means this is 10 days. Is $30 worth 10 days of progress on one character? In my opinion, not, un and this extra gear is kind of added in there, but realistically, that's not days. This is not days of gear. It's more like extra energy shards of gear. So even if you add this all up and add one day to the entire process, uh, this is, you know, 11 days of farming crystal is unless the legendary event is happening right now and if you don't get it right now you're gonna miss it you, you're not gonna this saving 11 days is probably not worth 30 dollars to you on average um Kardak, we don't even want to talk about we're gonna get a little bit here energy bundle here's a perfect example this is 24.99 for five days worth of energy uh, the beautiful thing is it's right now so not only can you choose to work on a character right now but you can choose to work on multiple different characters, farming shards for them, farming gear for them, whatever it takes right now. In addition to the giant influx of gold, this is worth about 500,000 gold just in the energy uh, and the extra credits, which are good but not necessary. You also get the experience, and depending on where you are in the game, 3,000 extra experience or five extra days of progress in one sitting is is the difference between the average free-to-play player if you buy just one of this you will be five days ahead of anybody you know that isn't spending money in this game or realistically doesn't buy this offer so you're going to accelerate your more or less your your growth and you're going to reach the certain milestones like level 60 65 70 even 75 faster than the average person and definitely faster than you would have before so even though it is 20 Four ninety nine for five days. If you answer a little bit more than five days of energy, more or less, and we're talking about the energy you get uh, for free, not necessarily the claims, um, 
are you willing to spend five dollars to fast forward one day in as far as your your you know to double the amount of energy you spent in a day to double your amount of xp double the amount of times you're willing to farm multiple things that's kind of the question to have and for me five dollars a day you know depending on where i was that seems reasonable uh, i think this is one of the best offers and i think this is an offer that truly uh, signifies what it means to spend money to get time and resources uh, allotted back to you as opposed to just waiting for it uh, the war consumable pack is a resource not so much a time thing uh, but yes a little bit of both uh, more of a oops i messed up pack uh, these offers are kind of weird to quantify because this is six of two different orbs, six and six, so 12 total orbs for $24.99. How many days does it take for you to get a premium orb, or how many days does it take for you to get a gold orb? That's one question. The second question is, what can possibly be in there? You don't know. This could be anywhere from like eight... 800,000 gold and a whole bunch of minion shards to like 6 or 12 million gold and all of the yo-yo and minerva shards in the world you don't know that so seeing 24.99 and going like well it's 12 orbs and the orbs are two dollars and you know 50 cents each or 225 each it doesn't matter because what's in there you don't know so you have to look at the worst case scenario and determine if that's worth it and then figure out, okay, so $24.99, I'm getting 600,000 gold, which is like two days of progress, and I'm getting a whole bunch of character shards, which otherwise would probably be another three or four days of progress. So is this worth the same as the energy offer? For my money, not really. I don't think there's enough gold in the gold orbs. I don't think there's enough good... I don't pre think premium orbs are premium. Not really worth it. And then, of course, the, <laughs> the best offer in the world... The 99 cent for a thousand cores. Uh, you see this, if, if you don't see this offer, surprise, you've spent money in this game. But, um, and it goes down every couple hours and then comes back up at reset. So like, this will come back. You'll see, even if it's gone for like an hour, it shows up again. But this offer is the best offer you've ever seen in the game because uh, there, I can even say on my free to play account, there've been times where if I spent $1 and bought this offer, a task that was previously in, uh, impossible would have became possible just because extra cores mattered a little bit more. Like we'll say unlocking a campaign character or something. Um, the rest of these offers really don't need to go into any more detail. And I'm not going to go into any questions about whether core spending is worth something. Because cores do have monetary value, whether you've spent money or not on them. Uh, every, you know, every 750 cores you accrue is roughly worth $10. You know, like that's $10 you didn't give them to get what it is. So... You kind of wind it up there. But that's pretty much it as far as the spending goes. Um, just always keep track of what it's going to give you. So when you see a new character offer, you can look at it as, well, this character won't be accessible to me uh, for a long time if I don't buy it. So if I buy her, I'll get it. But the other side of it is, is that character something that will help you? Because no one wants to buy a character and then just leave them, you know? No one's going to spend $50 on a new character and be like, and you stay at the bottom of the roster and I'll get to you when I get to you. Usually if you buy a new toy, you want to play with it. So that's why you should also look like, okay, let's say Electro and Shocker, characters that are coming out next. If Electro, I'm sorry, not Shocker, uh, Swarm. If Electro and Swarm come out and you're like, man, this is going to be great, but I'm not going to get Doc Ock. We could probably afford to wait and you know until they become farmable. It's realistic they'll become farmable in a reasonable time, and they'll probably get at least an unlock if they're a blitz milestone or a campaign. So you'll have access to these characters, but you wouldn't have to worry about maxing them out because you're not really worrying about the team. So really you want to make sure that the character offer you get is giving you value now as opposed to value later, and that value now is worth what you uh spent on it that's pretty much it hopefully this cleared it up uh, i don't know if i can request any comments on this you know maybe maybe just tell me like offers you regret buying some anytime you spent money on something not because of the amount but necessarily but like what was in it like did you buy a red star orb offer and then look at it and go oh no this was the worst 50 dollars i've ever spent my roster actually got worse than it you know, like, somehow I pulled nothing but dupes, and then a dupe in that. So all the time, I didn't even open an orb. 
Like, what's the worst thing you spent? Or when did you realize that not every offer had the exact value it said, and some offers were actually worth more than what they implied? Let me know in the comments below. Other than that, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Stingeli, and I'll catch you later.